For more stock news updates, remember to press the like button and subscribe. With that being said, let's get straight into the video. Investor excitement is on the rise again around SoFi Technologies. Despite a period earlier this year when this fintech leader faced challenges, particularly within its lending division due to increasing interest rates, SoFi has emerged as a serious contender against traditional large-scale banks. The company's ongoing evolution in the financial sector, combined with the strength of its growth in key areas, has led to renewed confidence among investors. Chief Executive Officer Anthony Noto has conveyed optimism about the company's future, asserting that the company is on track to become one of the 10 largest banks in the United States. During the company's third quarter earnings announcement, he confidently stated that this outcome is a question of timing rather than feasibility. This bold projection reflects the company's steady progress and ambition in a highly competitive market. The company's commitment to delivering a wide array of financial services to meet customer needs is central to its journey toward top-tier status in banking. Over recent years, the company has been reporting impressive growth, and now certain trends are beginning to work to its advantage, setting the stage for even stronger performance. Here, we will break down three primary reasons why the company's stock has the potential to double by 2026, providing insights into how this fintech could achieve significant gains. One of the most remarkable aspects of the company's journey since it went public in 2021 is its steady expansion across multiple economic climates. The company's revenue has risen by at least 20% for 17 consecutive quarters. This growth has persisted in spite of major economic challenges such as a global pandemic, sustained inflation, and shifts in interest rates. Recently, the company accelerated its growth to 30% in the third quarter of 2024, signaling that the economy is reaching a more stable phase and that the company is well positioned to capitalize on this stability. The sources of the company's growth are diverse, which adds to its resilience and appeal. The company continues to attract a high volume of new members, and these new customers are increasingly engaging with multiple products, reflecting a strong level of satisfaction and loyalty. In the third quarter alone, the company's new membership grew by 35%, while product adoption saw a similar boost increasing by 31%. Notably, existing customers are responsible for a significant portion of this growth, contributing 32% of all new product adoptions. In addition, 20% of new members opted for a second product within the first 30 days of signing up with the company, demonstrating high engagement and a willingness to explore the company's broader financial offerings. The company's management has pointed out that there is substantial opportunity for continued expansion. They cited research from Mintel, showing that 20% of Americans are actively searching for a new savings account, while a comparable percentage is interested in a new credit card. These statistics highlight a notable demand for improved banking solutions, and the company's diverse range of offerings, including savings and checking accounts, credit cards, investing services, and other financial products, positions it well to capture a substantial share of this demand. Every new customer that signs up with the company represents an opportunity for the company to reinforce its brand image and attract additional customers through word-of-mouth recommendations. This cycle, often referred to as a flywheel effect, could have significant long-term benefits and propel the company closer to achieving its goal of becoming a top 10 bank. Under Noto's leadership, the company has strategically shifted its focus, transforming from a student loan-centric company into a comprehensive financial services platform. This pivot has allowed the company to concentrate on capital-light, fee-based products which are less susceptible to economic fluctuations than traditional lending. During the third quarter, revenue from fee-based products increased by 65% year-over-year, now making up a full quarter of the company's adjusted revenue. This diversification not only drives revenue growth, but also contributes to profitability, thanks in part to the company's all-digital operational model, which minimizes the need for expensive physical branches and extensive human resources. The scalability of this digital framework has positioned the company to achieve profitability across its three core segments. The company's lending segment, although under pressure this year due to the high interest rate environment, has started showing signs of recovery. In light of these improvements, the company's management revised its forecasts, indicating that the lending business is likely to meet or even exceed last year's performance rather than falling short as previously anticipated. Meanwhile, the non-lending segments continue to play an increasingly significant role in the company's revenue mix. In quarter three, these segments accounted for 49% of the company's overall business, a considerable rise from 39% the previous year. This shift toward non-lending revenue sources reduces the company's dependency on the interest rate sensitive lending market, providing a more stable and diversified foundation for future growth. 
In addition to impressive growth in core areas, the company has also surpassed expectations in terms of profitability. Earnings per share reached five cents in the third quarter, exceeding forecasts which had predicted earnings of four cents. In response to these strong results, management raised its earnings forecast across the board. The projected earnings per share for the year increased from around 9 to 10 cents to a range of 11 to 12 cents, and expected revenue growth was revised upward from 18% to 22%. This improved outlook reinforces the company's robust position and signals the potential for sustained growth. Currently, the company's stock is valued at a forward one-year price-to-earnings ratio of 52. Although this valuation may not appear inexpensive, it is reasonable given the company's high growth rate and continued performance improvements. If the company can achieve a doubling of its earnings by the end of 2026 while maintaining this price to earnings ratio, it stands to reason that its stock price could double as well. Analysts on Wall Street are optimistic about the company's near term prospects. The consensus expectation for the company's earnings per share this year is 12 cents, and analysts project that this figure will more than double to 28 cents next year. Should the company sustain this rate of earnings growth, Growth, the stock price could realistically double without becoming overvalued. However, various factors will play a role in the company's future stock performance, including trends in the lending sector. If interest rates decrease and the company's lending segment continues to expand at a strong rate, the company is likely to benefit from positive market sentiment. This combination of factors could support the company's stock price and contribute to further growth. In conclusion, the company is seeing renewed interest from investors as it establishes itself as a strong alternative to traditional banks. The company's growth trajectory, increasing customer customer engagement and improving profitability across multiple revenue streams are key contributors to its positive outlook. The company's management team remains confident that the company is on track to become one of the nation's top 10 banks. And with continued growth, the company's stock could potentially double by 2026. For more stock news updates, remember to press the like button and subscribe. With that being said, I will see you in the next video.